record. Okay. Right now we are doing the Devar Malchut. The Devar Malchut, the speech of Lubavitch already, which he gave in 1991. And he's talking about the necessity in every generation, there always has to be a prophet for the Jewish people. An, a prophet. There's also false prophets. The Torah was full of them. Last week we learned a whole, a whole chapter about the commandment of the false prophet. And to the degree that God makes false prophets, that even they make miracles. <clears throat> false prophets are given the power to tell the future and to make miracles. But their problem is, is they try to take people away from Torah. They try to change the Torah. And a person that comes and does big miracles, and he, but, he, but he tries to change the Torah, is that person, the punishment is death. It wasn't. Now, now there's no more death punishment. But it used to be, <clears throat> that's the punishment. So you think a person did miracles and he benefited. What is it? What's the big deal if he just you know, takes a couple of commandments away? He's healing the sick. And who knows raising the dead? Who knows what he's doing? And just because he says, don't put on you know, your hand to fill in or something. You have to kill him. He says, yes, we don't know how important for the welfare of the world the Jews doing the Torah is. And it could be that in the beginning, like I say, a person that does <clears throat> sins as he receives a, a you know, success in the beginning, but it doesn't last. That's why we have to have a proper prophet. In every generation, there has to be a king, a potential king, that's the Mashiach, and there has to be an actual prophet that tells people what to do. And there has to be also judges. Those are the regular rabbis that tell everyone, okay, <clears throat> we're going to talk about that. We'll see, we'll learn the Sicha today. Okay. Simply, Bamadnu Bisvadus and so the Rebbe said that he, he have to announce to the whole generation that he himself is a prophet. <clears throat> He's made many prophecies. You've seen Six Day War, the, the Scad missiles, the opening up of you know, the doors of Russia. These were clear prophecies that no one else agreed with him, and he was totally right. In addition to how he's saving Jews all over the world in the, in the most amazing ways, bringing Jews back to Judaism, which no one even thought was possible. And, and even those who thought it was possible, not at such a scale and not at such an active way, you know, maybe people will come. So the Rebbe is saying he is the prophet of the generation. The previous Lubavitcher Rebbe, he was the prophet of the generation. And it could be that there's others, but he certainly is one. And the previous Rebbe certainly was one. And their whole purpose is to announce that Mashiach is coming. Here we go. Now we are in a Hasidic for bringing. And we are now in the place where the previous Rebbe used to learn and pray and do charity. So therefore, everyone, anashim, nashim, v'tap, men, women, and children, the call arosh, first of all, the kabel alatzmo, to accept on himself, hachlotos tovos, good decisions, the kayim et the horos, to do the teachings, hatovos ve'etzos, and the advices, she dubar aleim bezvados, which we talked about just now. Musad al Torah, and they're all founded on the Torah, Shabbatab, Torah, Shabbat, everything has to be according to the Torah and the written Torah and the oral Torah. In other words, the, the Shulchan Aruch, the law, Divrei Torah, Bohoros, the Rabbi and also the words and the directions of the rabbis, the previous rabbis of Chabad, and also the rabbis today. Sheyi Yeshoftin, there has to be judges. Titan Lechob, Bechosherecha, and all of your gates. She calls Zion Shari Adam, that all of the seven gates of man. What are the gates of each and every person? Right? I have seven gates. You have seven gates. What are the gates? Two eyes, two ears, two nostrils, and your mouth. Those are the apertures by which you can contact and express with the world. Uh, you might ask a question, what about the nose? Is the power of smell has a very deep effect on the soul. It says the Mashiach is going to judge everybody by their smell, by his nose. Everyone will start to do, conduct their life according to the Holy Torah. It was given by Malcolm Alki Rabban, according to the rabbis in general, and especially by means of that judge and that advisor and those advisors in, or the main advisor in the generation, who is the Chabad leader of that generation, to see what he has to say and to do it, right? What does he have to say? To bring every Jew closer to Judaism, to increase 
learning Torah to increase commandments, to say chitas, psalms, the, the portion of psalms every day, and the portion of, of the chumash every day, and the portion of tanya every day, and to fulfill what it says, right? To learn chasidu, to, to try to take the ideas about God to heart, etc. Ubapitu and to chair, give charity. Ubapratia is most, and even in more detail, kashem she is, no, just as there is a judge and a prophet in every generation. And this is one of the foundations of Judaism, 13 foundations of Judaism, that there has to be a prophet in every generation. That in every single place, there should be revealed godliness below. That's what the Mashiach does. He wants that God should be revealed everywhere. How do you reveal God? That's through the Torah, God's will. And But you have to remember it's from God. And, but, and that's what the the... the, the the judge and the advisor do. They make the Torah alive. Alter says, similarly, who, but pratias, but inside of every Jew individually. Yeshlo neshama, every Jew has a soul. And this soul is a chilakol, and it is the portion of God from above. That's the judge inside of every Jew. Begam also, but pirusho, that this is kind of open nitzchah, it's there, eternal. Right, but all generations, there's this judge that God is putting inside of you. Begam lamata, how it is in this world. So there's the that's the Jewish identity of every Jew, and that connects to the Torah and the commandments. <clears throat> we have to connect it <clears throat> actively, but it's already connected in its essence, and that is what makes the judgments of people in every situation, every moment of life. And that's the meaning of life. Someone asks you, what's the meaning of life? So the meaning of life is it unfolds every moment to meet the challenges and the opportunities and the the uh, let's say the the, uh, the 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 difficulties and the opportunities of life as they present themselves to us every moment to react and to act according to the Torah. Shashofet v'yoetz a prati that the judge and the advisor, which is in every single godly soul. Shekola Sharim, that all of the gates, namely all of your limbs, the, the nose, the eyes, Shalo Munagim should be conducted by means of your mind. Shoftech, your brain should judge you, right? Your brain says the Torah is true, and the brain is where it is the seat of the godly soul. <clears throat> and if you just allow it to be, and that judges you. Everything you do, you say, is this according to the Shulchan Aruch? Is this what the Rebbe would want me to do? Is this Omidosav Shabalev? Shakal Seichul Omidos the Nafsho Elokis, the the intellect and the emotions of the godly soul. Halomeretu Medina that learns and understands the teachings of the Torah. Obafrad, and especially Kafishim Maborim, especially how they are explained by the judge of our generation, who is the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe, and of course his representative, the Rebbe, is, is extension, continuation, is the Rebbe himself. It comes down to your heart, love and fear, loving God, loving the Torah, loving every Jew, loving God's creation. That when you learn the Torah, it has to be learning that brings to deed. That's the judge you have to put in yourself to judge you and to push you to do what God wants. And the advisor that's inside of yourself is how to do it in a proper way, how to learn the teachings of the Rebbe so that things are done in a pleasant way, in a proper way, but they're done in a dynamic way. Whether you're talking about what you see or whether you're talking about what you hear or whether you're talking about the smell or the speech <clears throat> and what you eat and what comes out of your mouth, what goes into your mouth, but call zot. I'm sorry. Yes. In each one of these gates that you have, the Aminu small on the right side or on the left side, you should do good, that's the right side, and turn away, turn away from bad, that's the left side. Sometimes you have to force yourself to do good, and you have to control yourself to refrain from bad. Right and left side, like a human being, right? That's the, your gates. That's what a gate is. Sometimes it's open, sometimes it's closed. And it says a judge has to be in all of your gates. And I am corresponding to this. There's two eyes, two ears, two uh, nostrils, 
And also the mouth tastes, it says, hint that they can taste sweet or it can taste bitter. Or you can close your mouth, you can open your mouth. Kalomar Shahoras Hashofet, the, <clears throat> the, uh, the, the, the teachings and the influence of the judge that's in your mind, the, the, your judge, which what's your judge? Your judge is the Torah ideas in your mind and the ideas of the rabbis, which are in your mind, Makifa, this encompasses and indicates how you should act in life. In other words, being natural is very, very good, just a flowing with nature, but it has to be proper. You know, natural naturalists can also be road rage. You know, someone cuts you off, that's it. You're just in the middle of the street with a crowbar or with your, you know, your revolver or something like that. Just flow with it. Just go with it. Huh? You know, that, that can be the worst thing. So you have to sometimes control yourself not to do bad. And sometimes you have to force yourself, yes, to do good. Uh, force yourself to do good. You have to force yourself also to refrain from bad. That's called, in Hebrew, it's called, in Chabsirah, the special called Eskafia. You force yourself to do good and you force yourself to refrain from bad. You force yourself. But eventually, when you realize, hey, this is really good because God, who's creating me, so God's pretty good. He's creating me and he's creating everything. So he's pretty good that God himself really wants me to how do you say, not get that road rage, not say negative things, not to get depressed. God himself wants, to, I, I want to have road rage. I want to have, that. that was the test of Adam. Are you going to do what God wants? God is only in my mind. Or are you going to do what I want that's in my heart? I want to follow my heart. I like that fruit. So it says, therefore, you have to judge yourself all the time. You have to think, but when you finally decide and it's clear what's right and what's wrong, then the test becomes a little bit easier. The temptation is a little bit less. Metamim, lashan rab, matamim. Then you can take from bitter and make it sweet. You can take the world, which is dark, and make it light. Like the language of the Tanya, these are things which, there are things which are sweet automatically, and there are things which are bitter, but you, by means of, a good chef, by means of putting spice on them, can make them sweet. That's what life is. There's sometimes in life things are good, sweet, and good, and they're obviously good, and you should enjoy them. And there's things in the world which seem to be good, but they're really terrible, and they're awful, and you have to spice them up in order to transform them to good. Some things you have to eliminate totally. Some things you can do good. Let's just take the simple example of getting married. Right? A, a couple, according to Judaism, that is only supposed to have marital relations after they're married. Then it's a big commandment, amazing, happy commandment. Then the parents are happy and they dance and they make a wedding. But people that have those same relationships before they actually make the wedding, it's a big sin. It's not a good thing. And the parents aren't happy and they're not happy and they don't want to have children. They don't want, and they don't want a family. They want to hide it from everybody, whatever it is. So just that one little thing, if things are done according to the Torah, suddenly a thing which can be licentious and, and the destruction of the world, right? The people are using their power of procreation for their own personal, how do you say, agendas. And, and it's the opposite of giving birth, the opposite of family, the opposite of society, the opposite of life, right? The, all they have to do is they just get married. Everything is okay. Everything is not only okay. It transforms to be a big mitzvah. It's a wonderful thing. So that's a certain simple example of how, how if things are done according to the Torah, it transforms bad to good. And really, but Penimius, even the most bitter thing, can also become sweet. Adarab, even more, it's even a better type of sweetness than it was before. Often in such a way that all of the details and the details, the smallest details of the life of a Jew can be permeated and conducted by means of the judge and the advisor inside of his own soul, his self. And also, even a more general, every single woman, every single man and woman, they are a judge and an advisor of their, their home and of their family. And they have to conduct your family and your home according to the teachers, uh, teachings of the Torah, not just yourself. Huh? Not just yourself. 
someone wrote to me that they don't believe in God and that they just live a good life and that they live a quiet life and that they do what's good. And this is, I said, very nice. But, you know, sometimes a person has to do things that aren't quiet. You know, you have to force yourself sometimes. To do, what about having a family, having children? Nothing more than that. You know, it takes away your silence. You're quiet. That's for sure. You can't sleep in there. The kids are crying. The kids are dirty. You have to change their diapers. Who wants to do that, right? Who says that's a good thing? God says it's good. Ah, you say it's quiet. You say it's natural. You say it's it's it's, it's placid. I can I can take take my time. I don't have to, to to devote myself to all these ridiculous. You know, if my child wants to eat this type of, uh, of cereal or that type of cereal, come on. Right? I can enjoy the birds and the flowing river, write poetry, all these other things. Right? So, okay, that's that's th those things are very nice, but uh, it doesn't take the place of doing things that God wants you to do. So therefore, you have to have a judge. And the judges, and you have to an advisor within yourself that also tells you to do things and also more that conducts your family and has an influence on people outside of you as well. Whether we're talking about, or and even in a more general way, that every single Jew, man, woman, and child, they have to accept on themselves and they have to fulfill the teachings of the judge and the advisor of the generation. And they have to also influence others your family, your wife, your husband, your children, and even more, ad, ad, I'll call Elu, and everyone that you meet. I've gone to Olam till you get to the whole world. The Rebbe said, you meet a non-Jew, you should somehow want to bring the conversation to seven Noahide commandments. That all the world, even this world, which is the language of concealment, Helen, with all of its details and the details of the details, becomes a private domain Name of the whole world becomes one point. What's the one point? It's the creator's, it's a creation. It's God's creation. And that makes it infinitely meaningful and happy and perfect and healthy. <clears throat> it becomes the, the private domain of the Yehidu Shalom, of the unique one of the world, God. Milash and Helam Lamaliusa becomes. Then the world is concealed, but in a good way of concealment. What I mean, it's so high that you can't grasp it. That it, it, it grasps that, as I said, that God makes darkness his hiding place. There's sometimes things are so good that you just cry. You just can't, right? You just can't fathom it. And because it's so good, it, it, it brings out a, a reaction of, how do you say, you can't comprehend it. It's too big for you. It's almost, it almost looks the same thing as crying. It's just so much. It just, you know, breaks your heart. Here, this is something that's so good. It's above understanding. And that's what it means that eventually when God, uh, uh, that, that it says that's the place where God is. It's concealed from us. And we live our lives according, accordingly, right? Like you live according to your lives, according to, you know, listen, the good, if you think about it, a person that's not married, and doesn't have children, can't figure out what in the world is this, having children is a happy thing. And then you get all these like very negative people like Freud and Adler, all these guys, and they say that everything is selfish. Why do you want children? For yourself. Everything is selfish. You want to be a boss. You want to be, you want to do to them what your father did to you. You got the Oedipus complex and you got the inferiority complex and you got this, but it's all you. It's all me. Right? Okay, you can say that. I mean, and they did say it, and they wrecked the world because they said it, because because it's false. It makes it makes sense, but it's a lie. It's a big lie. The fact of the matter is, is that we're here for the world to make the world better. That's why we're here. <clears throat> and the happiness that we have from having a family is not because it's a personal achievement. It's because it's a godly thing, and it's not understandable. That's what it means. God makes hiding his his dwelling. Good is incomprehensible. Beauty, love, these things are incomprehensible. It says, who puts us in that direction? As God says, I will put an, a prophet for you. A, and who is this prophet? The leader of the generation. He is everything that Tzadik has. Oh, this is the previous Rebbe, or the Rebbe is saying about himself. <clears throat> like, it says like the Evan Ashtia. There was, when God created the world, it says there was the foundation stone. And on this foundation stone, the whole entire world was based. That's why it's called Shtia. He shtit it all on the Tashtit. 
it's the 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 foundation of the world. This is that's where the whole that's where the the uh, the ark was in the holy of holies, Evan Ashtia. Says this Evan Ashtia can never move because the world is based on it. Shenim says b'mokum asuim. It has to be in a certain definite place in this physical world, and it's there constantly without any changes. I feel lo shinoi It's not even concealed. From this, a lot of people want to say that the Lubavitcher Rebbe is still here physically and that he's not, he hasn't been hidden at all. And, and here they've got what to rely on. I mean, I'm not so exactly, how do you say, inspired by that line of thinking, but it certainly is. A, it's a valid line of thinking. Here it is. Oka'aron, like it says, like the, it's not like the ark that was concealed, but the, uh, the, the, this, this uh, foundation stone, it'll never be concealed. It's always there. It says there always has to be a judge and a prophet that is there in every generation. Shemimenu, the whole world is founded. I mean, listen, it says that the whole entire holy temple is there. It is, it's there already. It just has to be revealed. But it's there, and it's all prepared and everything. You don't have to go and build it. You don't have to put the bricks down, nothing. It's there. It says that God made the whole thing, and it's ready. You ever, and somebody saw it. Radar picks it up. Huh? We don't see what real reality is. That's the point. And the raising of the dead will see what real reality is, what a commandment is. What it's, okay. There's two things in this foundation stone, Evan Ashtia, which is, which, like I said, was in the Holy of Holies, and the, 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 the Ark was put on top of it. It says there's two things. Number one, it's one point. It's one place in the world. Number two, everything is included in it. And this is hidden today at the letter of Evan Ashtia, Shate Yudke, Shat Yudke. It is there in the name of the first two letters of God's name. Similarly, is also in the word Yoshet Choshech. We said before that God makes darkness his hiding place. Yoshet means it's put, it's a foundation. So, what's the Rebbe saying? That the Rebbe is the foundation of the world and that the Rebbe will always be here, just like Judaism is always here, just like the the, uh, the this foundation stone, it's always there, and it's there in a revealed way. <clears throat> the yud shows on the bittel. It shows on the the how do you say the surrender of the world to the truth. Al in the shoftayach, like it says, the judges it says the the shata. This indicates on his pastors. Also, shata means it spreads out. Like it says, but surat also shin tough. That it spreads out. These are the last letters. In other words, it goes, becomes bigger, goes out. So that's the idea of the Jewish people is to be like this judge and to spread out. First of all, godliness in yourself and then to your family and then to the world around you, etc. But the basis of the whole thing is the Rebbe. Especially this year. This year is the year of I will show you miracles. That includes inside of it the majority of the letters of Tav Shin, the of Shtia, Tav Shin. One minute, Hey, Hey, Tav Shin, five thousand seven hundred. That's the. That's those are three of the five letters of this year's, of, of, of the date of this year. Three of the five letters. Hey, 5,000. Tav Shin is 700. And the year that the Rebbe was in was Aren and Niflot, and those two letters are not, but it still is the letters of Shasia, which that's the foundation stone. And instead of the Yud, there comes the Nun Aleph. All right, this year is Pei Gimel. Soon, in just a, another month, it's going to be pay dalid. <clears throat> okay, we've got all these initials and all these uh, abbreviations and all these, uh, you know, what is it, the, the signs and etc. But this year is pay gimel, we can say it's plaot gluim, revealed miracles. Nevertheless, this is the preparation, okay, for, for next year. Here we go, let's go. And this year, we've already finished the seven days. Okay, this is the Rebbe speaking. Like I say, the date when the Rebbe was speaking was one week after our date over here. So it was a later date. Okay, let's go. But no al in addition to this, we've already finished the three weeks. 
com- three complete weeks of the seven weeks of comfort after Tisha B'av. And we are now in the Haftorah of Anochi, Anochi, Hu Menachem I, I will comfort you. Oh, that's the Torah that's the Torah portion. Anochi, Anochi. No, I don't. Yes, it is. That's right. It is. That's right. Anochi, Anochi, Menachem Chem. That's this week's Torah portion. I, I put it up on the YouTube uh, so you can see it. It's last year's explanation with commentary. God said, I personally will comfort you. This answers the Jewish people that the Jewish people said last week, the Tomer Tzion of Zavani Hashem, that the, the Jewish people say, maybe God has left me. God has forgotten me, right? That the temple would be destroyed. Or like we should say now, Ad Masai, how long, God? How long are we going to be suffering? And God repeat, re- replies, Anochi, Anochi, Umanachem, I, I will comfort you. Kolel, including a nechama b'kaflayim, a doubled comfort of the future complete redemption. May it be God's will. But it by means of doing the service of God in shoftim will be given to you in all of your gates in a way of ashiva shoftenu will be done actually. Namely what? A shariach will be in the land of Israel. The Jews will all be taken to the land of Israel. According to the Rambam, and nobody disagrees with him, at least of his stature, the only way the Jews, all the Jews are going to be in Israel is through the Mashiach. That's the only way it's going to happen. Can't happen any other way. And sure enough, that's what's going to happen. For sure, it's promised that all the gates of the land of Israel and the gates of the third temple that presently are, says, are sunk in the ground, and the Jewish people, by means of their service, they will re- lift up these gates again. It says that the Rebbe, he, he answers the question, the Rambam says that we're going to have to build the temple. It's a commandment to build the temple. On the other hand, it says clearly in, in the Gomorrah and Zohar, a lot of places, that God is going to build the temple. So the Rebbe said, no, we're going to bring up these gates that have been sunk. That's our job. And of course, the work that we've been doing through the last, you know, two thousand years—that certainly is, you know, doing the work. But the the holy temple is the third temple is ready. It's already ready, and it's all built. It just has to be somehow or other revealed how it's going to be. I don't know, but we are going to bring up the gates. Obiachanim said together with this, the temple itself, the third temple itself, which is already banuiv mishuchlal, it's already built. And it's waiting, Lamaila, in spiritual worlds, whatever that means, how a building of 100 million tons can be uh, way, I don't know if that's how much it weighs, but there can be somehow or others waiting in the spiritual worlds. But that's what, it's good. that's what it is. Where does it say, by the way? Let's look and see. See, it says 141. This is Rashi and Tosos in the Gomorrah and Sukkah. This is not just in Kabbalah. There's a lot of places in Kabbalah, it also says this. <clears throat> and it's waiting. And together with this, the third temple itself, which is already built, will come down from above to below, will bring the gates up from below to above, and the third temple will come from above to below with the Holy of Holies and with the, uh, what is it? The, the, the foundation stone, which is with it. So is the foundation stone revealed? Is it not revealed? So obviously being revealed is something a little bit different than what we understand. That, in fact, we're so concealed, we don't really know what the true reality is. But that's what's going to be. That the whole entire world will now have a firm foundation. Now that we are after the 15th day above, that the mazel is, that the zodiac sign is a lion. And that's the first letters of, of Elul. Rosh Hashanah, Arye, a lion, is Elul, Resh, Rosh Hashanah, Yud, Yom Kippur, He, Hoshana Rabbah, Hine, Minag Yisrael, the custom of the Jewish people is to wish every single Jew and to all of the Jewish people, Kativa Vechatim Tova, have a good, <coughs> uh, be written and sealed in a good way 
and it should be a complete, that's on Rosh Hashanah, and it, and it should be a final decision that you should be written and sealed for a good year, a sweet year, and in other words, taking out the bitterness of the world and transforming it to sweet, and Gashmis Baruchnius, physically, spiritually, and also in spiritually and physical together. And God will fill all of the requests of our heart, of every single Jew for good. One of my teachers used to say, there's no bigger blessing than that. That God should fill all of your requests for good. Obafran, especially in doing the request of every single Jew, how long, God, how long is this going to be? Hashiva Shotein Kurishana, bring back our judges like in the beginning and our advisors like they were in the Geula Mitis Shlema by means of the Mashiach. Take up Umiyad Mamish immediately. Okay. I was thinking of doing a Sikha, but I'm not going to do it inside. I'll say the Sikha. I said I was going to do it, but I'll do it inside. In fact, maybe I'll even do two. We'll see. Let us, here we go. Stop the share. Stop the recording.